What's going on guys, Mark back here with yet another video. Today we're going to be talking about that 2017 solar eclipse. So I've had so many questions about you know what they ought to do and uh, how they ought to uh, get their job done uh, because it is approaching like within the next two days. So you don't have much time and if you have waited until this point there's a really good chance that you're just not going you're not going to get what you want. Um, there is more or less a chance that you should have prepared much, much sooner, probably like months in advance. And if you have not prepared, then you are going to, you're, you're going to have to improvise. You're probably going to have to cast a shadow. You know, you're going to have to view it in some other way. You're, uh, you're not going to be able to photograph it the way you wanted to because you don't have your solar film, you don't have uh, your filters, you don't have any of that stuff to protect your eyes or your camera gear. And your eyes uh, are expensive, but your, your camera gear is expensive. And if you don't already have everything you need, just forget about it because you're going to be gouged. You're going to pay probably triple the, the price that you were originally going to pay uh, it, had you picked up everything that you needed like three or four months in advance. Uh, but now that we're at this point, um, you should either borrow from a friend, beg, plead uh, from maybe other photographers. Maybe they've got some extra filters. Maybe they've got some extra gear that they are willing to loan to you. Um, but even if it's all out of the realm of possibility, I still seriously think that everyone should go to uh, the event. If you live in the United States, Go to the event, go to a viewing party, go to uh, a park, go to uh, the riverfront, go anywhere uh, and hang out with other people. Experience this uh, as an individual. View it with your own two eyes, if at all possible. Don't just rely on your camera gear, okay? So, some of you may have watched my last video, which was um, on how to make a DIY solar filter. For the vast majority of the people in the United States, you all live somewhere uh, in like a 20 to 50 mile range of a Walmart, okay? Uh, there is material that you can pick up. It's called Mylar, okay? You can pick these up anywhere. Now, I didn't happen to get mine off uh, of Amazon or uh, from Walmart. I got mine from Amazon. These are emergency space blankets. These are actually reflective on both sides, okay? And the good thing about this is that even though it's pretty thin, because you can see through it, uh, but it's already folded, so you could double it up, double it over, and give yourself double the protection. Not for your eyes, though. This is not good enough for your eyeballs. But it will do in a pinch for your camera. So I used this material... And I created a DIY one for this beast just so uh, some of you could get an idea of what it would involve. So I put it down here in the lens hood and this is it. This only cost me a few pennies. I think these were like 39 cents and these are just little water catcher cups uh, for plants. Um, how many folds would be safe for what? Uh, for your eyes? I don't know. Um, I don't know that there is any safe level. Now, this is just me, and this is just what I'm going to tell you guys. I tripled and quadrupled mine over for the eyes, and I, I think I was about six layers deep, and I did take a quick peek at the sun for probably like, I don't know, five seconds, just to see how much light it was actually blocking. But for this, for the camera, you can get away with one. But that's not all you need. Um, I'm also using a 10-stop ND filter. Okay, Now, this ND filter is made by uh, Breakthrough Photography. Uh, some of you guys may have heard of them. They're out of uh, California and San Francisco. Uh, but this thing, is it's a very expensive filter. Okay, uh, Not many people need this filter unless you're doing a lot of... Um, long or uh, long shutter daytime photographs, especially for people that are wanting to do, you know, smooth out the water and stuff. These, these filters are fantastic. And the only reason I spent the amount of money that I did on this one is because it's really color neutral. Okay. Not a lot of uh, color casts. A lot of those cheaper indie filters are just garbage. Okay. Um, I don't care 
you know, what promises they make on the ad, on the Amazon ad, it's just, they're usually not very good. The The image quality is going to be really horrendous. Uh, the optics are really bad. Um, and the overall image always seems to have a color cast. In my case, most of the filters just end up having like a blue cast to all my photographs. Now, to a lot of people, they don't really mind. They think that they can fix it in post, but if it is shitty glass, you're going to have a crappy picture. So I recommend staying the hell away from those uh, cheap Chinese uh, indie filters. They're just not worth it. If you're really wanting to get into some slow, uh, slow shutter speed photography or you're wanting superior optical and image quality, pay some money. Okay. This one right here costs about $190. Now I know that that is a quite, quite a bit out of people's price range. There are other filters that I would recommend. My number one pick is breakthrough photography. My second pick would be B and W. Okay. Um, I do think that a lot of those, uh, have already been sold out or are on back order. You're going to find them all day long right now, uh, on, um, Amazon, unfortunately, a lot of them are saying that they are not going to be delivered till, say, like August 22nd or whatever. And obviously, if you're at this point in the game and you still don't have what you need, you're not going to be able to get stuff like this. You're definitely not going to find 18 stop ND filters. You're not going to find 16 stop. You're going to find tens. Okay. Now, if you can do a one day delivery, if you can go to your local photography store, there is a chance that they will have some. But the closer you get to the path of totality, the less likely you are going to um, be able to pick something like that up. So, uh, you can also use an ultraviolet filter. If you have a UV filter, that would help add a little bit of protection uh, to your camera lens. Um, but I still recommend using some type of reflective material to bounce a lot of that white light out of your system. When you do that, when you when you flood your sensor with direct sunlight and you don't have anything reflecting the really, really harsh UV rays back out or providing it with some level of protection, you're going to burn your sensor up, okay? I'm not saying that it is going to happen. I'm saying that it can happen. I have seen lots and lots of photographers that have shot directly at the sun with minimal protection and as long as they were not doing it in live view and they only just took a quick single shot, um, they were perfectly fine. But the problem is, is that most people have DSLRs, okay? DSLRs have a mirror on the inside of the camera. When that light comes into the lens and bounces off that mirror and then bounces up to the top mirror it bounces right back into your eye. That is basically unfiltered light. You're going to burn your retinas off and then you're going to be blind. Okay. So just at least in one eye, uh, binoculars, completely different story. You're, you're hundred percent blind, but, but just don't do it. Okay. I know that so many of us have said this over and over and over again. Don't look directly at the sun, uh, through a prism or, or through a mirror system on a DSLR. Um, and don't look at the sun directly with your eyes. I know. I just know it. Some guy, tomorrow, Tuesday morning, it's going to be the first thing on the news. There's going to be some dumbass out there that has looked directly in the sun and <laughs> they've lost their eyesight. Their, their retinas are all burned out and they can't say that no one told them. I mean, it has been splashed across the news everywhere. Don't look at the goddamn sun. Okay. So if you are at this point and you don't have any filters, you don't have any ND filters, you don't have any white light filters, you don't ho have any solar film, you don't have anything. This is a cheap, easy, quick alternative that you can use. Like I said, this is just a little plastic pot. Check out my video that I did uh, a day or two ago. And I, I basically tell you how I did this. But... You can actually, like, this just happens to sit right down perfectly inside of the Fujifilm uh, 100 to 400 lens hood. But I did test it on several other lenses because I am also a Sony shooter. Uh, but this is a big lens, and this is the one that I really want to capture um, I'm, my goal on this trip. Uh which is only about an hour away from me. Technically where I live, I could get about 90 
uh, 7 to 98% totality, but I really want to get in the path. So I'm going to be in the path of totality, um, and it's only about an hour away. But I did try it with other Fuji lenses. I tried it with the 16 millimeter. I tried it. I tried it with like this little 19 millimeter from from Sigma on a Sony camera. Now on the on these types of setups, you'll probably have to use a little bit of tape to hold it in place. But because you cut the bottom out of the little pot. This allows you to put it on almost any lens you have. Uh, if you have the larger diameter lenses, it's probably not going to work. Uh, here's another lens. I tried it on the Sigma 30 millimeter. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. This thing sits right on top. No big deal. Like I said, you might have to use just a little bit of gaffer's tape or just a little bit of... Um, Painter's tape, you know, something that'll peel off really nice. But this can uh, covers the entire objective of your front element, okay? So, no problem. Um, you can pick up the Mylar. Like I said, most places, you can pick it up at Walmart. So, if you live within a few miles of Walmart, you're good to go. Uh, the ones at Walmart are not as good as the ones that I have. So, you might have to double it up. Like I said, go check the video I did a couple days ago. It'll tell you everything you need to know. It's easy to make. Uh, you just need a little bit of super glue. You can use, um, this is just, like I said, a little water catching pot. But you can use like, um, like a sour cream bowl. Okay, you know the, the, the plastic tubs that they come in? Or, the, or a cottage cheese bowl. You don't have to just get this thing. I found this at Lowe's in the potting section. They were little water catchers, plastic. But, like I said, you can use, cut the bottom out, spread this film over the front or over the top of the sour cream bowl or the, the cottage cheese bowl. Cut out the center of the lid, but leave the lip so that you can clip the lid back down on it and you can secure the Mylar inside. Hey, Dunny, how's it going, man? Uh, I'm going to try to shoot the Eclipse over the USA with my 2,000 mile lens. <laughs> Yeah, good luck with that, man. But, uh, yeah, you can do it in a lot of different ways. But you don't have much time. I mean, if if you've waited this long, I, I really, I, I say it's your fault uh, if, if you don't have all your ducks in a row. So, <clears throat> but if you happen to have uh, a couple of indie filters and that's the only way you're going to get it done, that will definitely help protect your sensor a little bit. But I am not recommending it, okay? I'm saying you can do it. I'm just saying I'm not recommending it. If this eclipse means that much to you, go for it. Hello from the Dominican Republic. Uh, we will only see it 75%, but still excited. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, the further you get away from the center, uh, the, the less you get. But I still think it's an amazing, amazing event. So if you guys are anywhere around, seriously, stop whatever you're doing about 1 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, if you're on the East Coast, it's uh, uh, 12.30. It's going to be around 12.30 in, what is it, Central Mountain Time or whatever. It's going to be, I mean, it's just going to be traveling all the way across the U.S. So if you're anywhere near it, go outside and check it out. But if you've got an ND filter, make sure you put that on. This will actually help you quite a bit to open your camera up, uh, open that aperture up a little bit block a lot of those harmful UV rays, but it's not going to be enough. So while you can do it with an ND filter only, I don't recommend it. Um, the, the Mylar is a cheap and easy way to get it done. So if you have access to some, you can go to your local camping store. You can go to REI. Uh, you can go to uh, Cabela's. You can go to Walmart. You could probably pick it up at uh, Target. Um any of those places that have a small little camping section generally have the Mylar space blankets, okay? And you can pick a couple up. Really, you only need one, depending on how many lenses you plan on using that day. But filters help. UV filters will help. At least make at least one ply of this to help reflect a lot of that ultraviolet light back towards away from your lens, away from that sensor. And for God's sakes, whatever you do, if you have a DSLR, don't look through the viewfinder. 
That is unfiltered sunlight coming through there. So don't do it. Don't look at it. Don't put your put your camera in live view. Make sure you've got your filters on and point your camera upward and then capture, but do not look through that viewfinder. Now, if you have a mirrorless camera, technically on a mirrorless camera, everything is is there is no mirror in there. So you're looking at everything, even through the viewfinder, that is considered live view. All right. So you don't have anything horrible to worry about. Your sensor may get fried if you don't act right, if you don't put the proper protection in front of the lens, but you can still look at the sun through the EVF because it's electronic. It's not uh, optical. So there's no mirrors bouncing that direct uh, ultraviolet radiation right into your eyeballs and burning your retina out. So that's a good thing. Um, i trying to pull up the comments again. Let's see. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Dunny Monster says, even if you don't take any photos, trust me, experiencing a full eclipse is a great thing to do. The silence is deafening. All the birds think it's nighttime and go to bed. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people were saying that uh, everything starts thinking it's nighttime and they all start trying to go to bed. Uh that's probably what I'll experience. I've, I'm actually going uh, all the way to a lake. I'm going to some place kind of secluded uh, out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, probably lots of wildlife sounds before the eclipse. Uh, but I imagine it's going to get pretty quiet uh, pretty fast. Not to mention everyone else is just going to be... No no one's going to be saying anything. Everyone's just going to be looking up at the, the sky just in amazement anyway. So I imagine... Uh, even the crazies will, will be quiet at least for two minutes and 45 seconds. Uh, Rocky says mylar and ND filter is safe, uh, or even still the sensor could fry. Uh, it is safer, um, because you're not using actual solar film. There is a chance it's very unlikely, but I am not saying, I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just saying that I have been around many Photographers that have shot directly into the sun with an ND filter and some mylar sheets. And they, as long as they were doing single shots, they weren't just keeping it on live view. They weren't doing like a three minute video of just exposing their sensor to that ultra uh, violet radiation. Um, they took single shots, still photographs, and their camera was fine. I've never personally seen anyone fry their camera except for extremely long exposures, okay? So if you play, when you do uh, a video, especially on like a DSLR, that, that mirror flips up and it exposes the sensor full time, 100% of the time. And if you're pointed directly at the sun uh, and you don't have any protection for your sensor, yeah, absolutely, you're, you're going you're gonna to melt that sensor. No doubt about it. Um... Double Ira says, if people can't get their hands on filters, they should use the old welding glass trick. Uh, that's that's actually a good point. While you can still go right now, and uh, you can go to the uh, like your hardware stores. You know, a lot of people wear the the welding masks. They wear the welding goggles. <coughs> Unfortunately, the ones at the store uh, are usually not a dark enough tint. In my experience and from everything that I've read, in order to view the sun safely, even with uh, welding goggles, even with full face uh, welding masks, they're usually not dark enough. You have to have, I believe it's uh, level 13 or 14, okay? It has to be in that range. It has to be dark enough that you can do that. But yes, welding glasses, welding face masks, all of those things will work. Um, I can't say how well. Uh, you're going to be able to see it will turn everything green. So mylar actually blocks out a lot of the orange and yellow light. So you get a really nice blue tone to everything. With the welding glasses, you're going to get everything is very green toned. So it will block out a lot of the yellows, but it has a green cast to it. With ND filters, uh, it blocks out a, a lot more white light. Uh, so you're going to get more of a orangey tone. So there are pros and cons to every type of filter. And all of these different uh, types 
of filters or, or protection mechanisms are, are going to yield different results. Uh, but if you like the results, you know, if you like a, a, a more blue tone, go with the Mylar. If you like a more warm tone, go with a <coughs> go with the my or um, an ND filter. And if you don't mind the green, go with welding glasses. But make sure you buy level 13 or 14, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. With the coffin. Um... Dunny Monster says the only bit that's weird is when all the druids and robes come out chanting. <laughs> Man, I thought that only happened around what is that place called? Stonehenge. And uh that weird fraternity for all the politicians out in California. What is that? Locust Grove or what the hell is that place called? I don't know. I'm a conspiracy theorist, so I'll be watching that shit. <laughs> uh Double Ira says, yeah, um, there would be the fun in the color correction. Yeah, you would have, uh, if you're using welding glasses, you're going to have a lot of color correction to do. But um, another good tip for everyone that's thinking about going out and photographing the totality is use the longest lens you possibly have. Use the highest resolution camera that you own. The closer you can put yourself to the object, which in this case will be the sun and the moon converging, uh, you're going to want to focus out to infinity, okay? Uh, if you have a, an extremely long super telephoto lens like uh, the 100 to 400, uh, even a 70 to 200, it, the, the 200 end is going to get you much closer than a wide angle. Um, and that's if you want to take close-ups of the event. But if you prefer to take shots uh, and include some landscape, maybe uh, include the the crowd watching or whatever if you want to get any of that stuff if you want to do long exposures or whatever uh you can use a wide angle lens 30 millimeters are great 50 millimeters are great just you you really should be at your location about a day early any good photographer is not just going to show up 20 minutes before the shit starts and start trying to figure out how they want to take their shot okay uh, you should know where you're going. You should know your spot. You should know how it, you know, how it plays out. You know, what surroundings are going to be there. Do you want to include some trees? Do you want to show off, uh, some water? Is there a lake, a pond? Is there, uh, an ocean? Are you going to be close to the beach? Uh, or you want maybe a palm tree, uh, in the shot? You know, think about all those things. Composition is just as important as simply getting the shot. My entire goal at this event, it's not really to capture any of the landscape, not to capture any people. I want the diamond ring, okay? Uh, and for those of you that don't know what the diamond ring is, the diamond ring is uh, the moment that the sun just starts to peek back out after the solar uh, eclipse is about to be finished. The totality is about to be finished. When that uh, burst of sunlight just starts to come around the backside of the moon, that's called the diamond ring. And it only lasts for a very, very few seconds. So you can bet your ass I'm going to have my camera uh, in high burst. Okay? I'm going to have it in high burst. And I'm probably going to be doing um, at least uh, three shots in a bracket. I'm probably going to expand that to five shots in a bracket. Uh, if I think I have time, I might do nine bracketed shots. Four on the underexposed, four on the overexposed, and then one perfectly exposed. Okay? So, it really just depends on what you're looking for. It really just depends on what you want to get out of this. So, uh, if you know what you're wanting the final image to look like, if you've not scouted your location yet, uh, I I'm just going to tell you, you probably shit out of luck. So, hate hate to tell you all, but I mean, it's, it's really, really late in the game. But I at least wanted to get uh, a lot of this information out there just in case there were a few stragglers that needed a little bit of, uh, of help, okay? So if you have any questions, I'll be here for at least a little bit while uh, longer. Um, Dunny Monster says, if you get protection wrong, you'll likely get a hot spot on your sensor, which cannot be repaired. Uh, that's 100% true, Dunny. You will burn pixels. They're even, they're, and depending on the length of exposure as well, there's a chance you may even burn your sensor out. Okay? Um us Ranger says, no way, using my backup D5300, not my DA10, just in case. See, these guys know, you know, you're not going to point 
you know, thousands of dollars worth of equipment at the sun unless you have the proper equipment. Now, if you're just shooting on a shitty ass, you know, little, uh, you know, $500 camera, whatever, if you happen to burn the sensor, you know, that's probably a couple hundred dollar uh, repair job. Nothing major. Uh, Double Iver says the money shot. To me, yes. The diamond ring is the money shot for me. Now, if I happen to, to get some extra shots and stuff in between, maybe I'll do something uh, with one of my cameras. I'm planning on maybe doing a time lapse or something. Uh, with one of them, uh, but that should allow me to get all the different phases of the eclipse, you know, so that's, I am looking forward to that. Dunny Monster says, all that prep, then on the day, it's cloudy and you can't see shit. <laughs> yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, I've been, I've been checking the weather. I, I really have a uh, ridiculous, a ridiculous amount to make sure that we're not getting any clouds. And according to, um, this is where I'm going. I'm going to... I'm going to Dunmore. I don't know if that shows up correctly or not. But it says Monday, full sun and 90 degrees. We got partial clouds. Look at that. Saturday and Sunday, partially cloudy. And then Tuesday and Wednesday, thunderstorms. So I think we lucked out. Now... Let's just pray that nothing changes, okay? I mean, it's, there's literally clouds all around the one day that is about to go down. Hey, Millie, how's it going? Just stopped by to say hello, but can't say good luck Monday. Thank you. I appreciate it. I've been working my balls off trying to get this stuff uh, ready. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm really hoping that we have no clouds. we got clouds on Sunday or Saturday and Sunday, and we're definitely having clouds on Tuesday and Wednesday. But as of right now, the forecast is 100% sunny. 100% sunny. Uh, Double Ira says, that will probably be the case for most. I really hope that it's not. I mean, we've been waiting since 1918 for a full solar eclipse in the United States. So, you know, if, if we blow this, or if, if, if the, the fates decide to blow this for us, I tell you what, man, I'm, I'm out of photography. I'm not doing it no more. This has been a lot of work. I've been prepping for like two weeks. I've been outside practicing. That's the reason I haven't been putting out a whole lot of videos. Real life and practicing. Seriously. I mean, there's just been no time to mess with you. <laughs> i got practice to do. And if I want my good shots, I've got to practice. Um... Double Ira says, I uh, wonder uh, what the increase in percent of blind people will be after Monday. Probably a lot. I mean, even though the news and everyone else has all been saying the same thing, don't look at the sun. For the love of Christ, don't look at the sun. Make sure you pick up some glasses. Make sure you pick up, you know, your, your filters. Just make sure you do all the right things. And it's been going on for weeks. There's going to be one guy, at least one dude. He's going to be on the news on Tuesday morning with his retinas burned out. <laughs> um, Dunny Monster says I Should rename it to Dunny Moore Damn it I'll do a special rain dance for you Mark Man I wish you would I will I will whore slap you <laughs> uh, Millie says We will only get a partial here And I can't travel So counting on you Oh thanks Millie I appreciate that extra pressure Really appreciate that extra pressure You should just drive here Seriously I'm actually thinking about taking the, uh, the, the plan is, is to load up the truck, take the travel trailer, drive down to the lake, set up, get there really, really early in the morning and, um, basically just hang out. I'm even going to toss a generator, uh, in my, uh, in the bed of my truck and I'm just going to plug in the camper into the generator. I'm going to have air conditioning all day. It may be 90 degrees out there. Somebody, I'm going to be sipping cocktails, waiting for the event. I'll already have my spot picked out. I'll be good to go. No worries on my end. But if the clouds come through and ruin all that shit for me, it's going to be bad news. Um, Dave says, I wish I could make it down uh, there. I'll have to settle for 90% up here. You should, man. You should drive down. There's plenty of plenty of little bitty spots all over the place down here that are less known. Everyone right now is flocking to like Hopkinsville, uh, Russellville, Princeton, uh, 
of course, there's a few spots just north in Illinois. Illinois, as some people put it. <laughs> um, Millie says, my wife is going to Chicago. Sweet. Uh, Michael says, late to the video, did you discuss exposure settings uh, or the ex exposure settings you plan? Uh, that really depends on what stuff because uh, i'm going to be swapping my setup out there's going to be a few shots where i'm using the 10 stop nd filter there's going to be a few shots where i use this because i want that blue look uh, in some of my photographs uh, like i said the 10 stop will be if i just want to darken the available light uh, and i might even do a combination of the two the um it, it's also going to depend on the camera and the lens setup that i use because as of right now my close-ups obviously are going to be done with the 100 to 400. With this setup, with uh, the filter on it, I am probably going to set it up uh, ISO 200. I am going to be setting this thing up uh, probably at about a 5.6, and um, I'm I'm thinking I'm just going to let the the I'm going to put it on auto shutter because I actually have an electronic shutter in here that does up to one thirty-two thousandths of a second. So that is really going to help me uh, reduce the amount of light uh, without having to worry so much. But it is still concerning. I mean, you just don't want to point a $3,000 camera at the sun and have it burn your sensor up. But I'm also going to be taking two of my Sonys, <coughs> um, an action cam, and my iPhone. I'm going to be taking video, time lapse, uh, bracketed shots. I'm going to be taking um, uh, filtered shots. I'm going to be taking a lot of footage, uh, both of my surroundings, but my main shot is going to be with the Fuji X-T2 at 5.6 with ISO 200 with auto electronic shutter going all the way up to probably one thirty-two thousandths of a second. And I want to capture that diamond ring. The diamond ring shot is what I'm looking for. That's what I'm most interested in. I'll be glad if I get a bunch of other really cool shots and everything, but that diamond ring is the shot for me. That's what I'm going for. Everyone loves that shot. Everyone, I mean, that's the, the shot is iconic. It's, I mean, it really is. It's iconic. I don't know if any of you uh, are nerds like me, but I used to love that show Heroes when it first came out. And they always had the eclipse, you know, so. And it was always the diamond. It was always the little, it was always that little peak of light right behind there on the logo. It was, it was awesome. Um, Mike says, sounds like what I'm doing with my 55 to 200 on the X-T2. Um, what I'm doing with my X-T2 using um, Malmi 16 stop. Yeah, I'm using a, a 10 stop. Uh, just because uh, I don't really want to darken it so much because with my shutter on automatic, uh, it will auto adjust <clears throat> and I don't want to block as as much of the natural light. Um, I, I'm going to let my shutter do most of that. Like I said, the, the shots that I'm going to be taking with the X-T2, they're going to be single shots. I'm probably not going to be doing any long exposures or anything with uh, the X-T2. I'm not burning that sensor out. I'll burn out uh, a couple of my other cameras. I don't really care. I'll replace those. But uh, the X-T2, I'm not, I'm not going to burn it out. So, uh, if you guys have any other questions, go ahead, holler at me. Let me know. Uh, because... Uh, a, we've got more practice to do, and B, if you don't have your filter jet, you need to get out there and pick up some Mylar. I've said it uh, several times now, but I'll say it one more time for those that just showed up. Make sure you scoop up some emergency space blankets. You can find them at Walmart. You can find them at Cabela's. You can find them at Target. Uh, you can find them at REI stores. Any camping supply store. Uh, camping World would probably have some. Uh, any of the, uh, any of those places would have it. If they've got a small little camping section, most of them sell those cheap. You can even go to like your grocery stores, Kroger, uh, you know, Piggly Wiggly, whatever the hell you got around you. Uh, most of them sell those Mylar balloons in the flower section. If you happen to find one, uh, that is silver and doesn't have any writing on the back side of it, cut that side out. It won't be creased. It won't be folded. That would be even a better option 
than this because you see you've got to really be careful about how you place uh, it around uh, so that you don't get a crease in the middle of your shot you don't want to have to do a whole lot of uh, extra post-production all right so yeah go pick up a mylar balloon and and trace out uh, a cottage cheese cup you know one of those tubs you buy from the grocery store that's cheap have some cottage cheese when you're done rinse it out turn it over trace out and and put some put some glue on the lip right there on the lip of the of the bowl and set it flat on your mylar let it dry let it dry nice and tight and then cut it out and then snip all the excess away from that edge and then you can cut the bottom of the cottage cheese bowl or the sour uh, cream bowl or whatever and you can slide it right over the end of your lens you can paint it black if you want to uh, keep some of the light out of there <coughs> any of those methods would work I mean you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars um, and even if you had thousands of dollars you're probably not gonna find much right now because no one is selling uh, and if they are they're gouging the shit out of you so that's pretty much all I've got for you guys um, if you all have any more questions, drop those down in the comment section below. I will be reading those uh, within you know the next several hours. I will try to answer you just as soon as possible so that you can get um, anything that you need in preparation. You're cutting it close. You've got about two, three days technically. Just under three days left. And really... You need to have it done before then. So if you have everything you need, awesome. I cannot wait to see your all's photographs. If you are just now getting started because you're a dumbass and you're a procrastinator from the, the way back, you, you are in bad shape, man. And this is about your easiest option. Mylar, doubled over, go to Kroger, go to any of those places. Walmart, Target, REI, Cabela's, Tractor Supply might have them. I don't know. Any of those places. <laughs> oh, I've got some of the worst. <laughs> um, yeah, Dave even said a pop tart wrapper. That's actually a good idea. I mean, if if that's all you've got, it will work. Um, I know that uh, a lot of those uh, packages, some of those packages, are actually mylar to help keep the light out and keep the the food a little bit more fresh. You can even use those. Uh, Double Iris says, can't wait to see what comes out, uh, man. Good luck. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I hope you have a fantastic, uh, day out photographing the eclipse. Uh, Steven says, I'm so confused. What is a solar eclipse? If you look at it, will you be blind? Yeah. Probably. Probably not, actually. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> All right, guys, so that's all I've got for you. Uh, if you have any questions, like I said, drop them in the comment section below. I'll be reading them for the rest of the evening. I will try and get back to you just as soon as I possibly can. And as always, thanks so much for stopping here at the Photo Video Show. I'm your host, Mark Puckett, and I will see you guys again on the next one. Peace, and I hope you get that shot. I'm going to get mine. <laughs> be good, guys.